Hey everybody, welcome to HomeRecordingMadeEasy.com and here on my YouTube channel and in this video we are going to take a look and a listen to the Tegular Audio Manufacturer Tube Summing Mixer and it is coming right up. Okay, welcome back. So before we look at the Tube Summing Mixer by Tegular Audio, let's talk a little bit about analog summing. The question that I'm sure a lot of you may be asking is, what is analog summing and what can it do for my mixes? Okay, without getting too technical and to keep this a basic overview, analog summing is a way to achieve the sonic characteristics of an analog console without having to own such a large and expensive piece of equipment. We can use a summing mixer in conjunction with our DAW to achieve similar results. What does this add? It adds coloration, harmonic distortion, and nonlinearities to the audio signal, which adds a very pleasing sound. It also adds a sense of depth, punch, width, and clarity to your mix. A large part of the sound of our most favorite records has to do with the sound of the console that was used. Whether it was an SSL, an EVE, an API, the console added a sonic footprint that has been lost when recording and mixing completely in the box in the digital domain. Think of this as the same concept as recording and mixing through an analog console. When you record on an analog console, you have individual tracks, drums, bass, guitar, vocals, etc. You mix those tracks together using level, panning, EQ, compression, and when the mix is finished, that mix flows through the mix bus of the console, where the individual tracks or the mix is summed into a left-right stereo track and then out to tape. So when using a summing mixer along with the DAW, we mix our individual tracks in the DAW, we send those tracks to the summing mixer, which acts like the console bus. The mix is summed into a left-right stereo track and brought back into the DAW, which acts like the tape machine. With this setup, we have achieved the same signal flow and analog sound characteristics in our home studios as there was in large commercial studios where everything was recorded on large analog consoles. I know it seems a bit confusing, but in a moment we will jump into the DAW and I will show you the routing and it will clear things up. So don't worry if this is all new to you. Today we're going to look at the Tegular Audio Manufacturer TSM, the Tube Summing Mixer. The TSM is a 32 channel summing unit. It has matching input and output transformers as well as tubes, which really adds a warm but yet open top end to the audio signal. The TSM is really simple to hook up and use. On the front we have two large VU meters and a stepped output control for easy recallability. On the back, we have inputs 1 through 32 on D sub connectors and channels 33 through 40 on TSR connections, which gives you up to 40 channels of summing. And finally, we have both XLR and quarter inch output jacks. So now that we took a look at the TSM, we understand a little bit more about analog summing, let's head on over to the DAW and let me show you how to set up and route the audio and finally listen to what the TSM can do to your mix. Come on back. Okay, welcome back. So um, in this section here, I'm gonna show you how to set up the DAW for the proper routing to get your audio out of your DAW, out of your interface, through the summing mixer, and then back into the DAW. Um, if you already kind of know this and you just wanna hear what the summing mixer sounds like, you could jump ahead in the video, or maybe I'll put a timestamp on the bottom and you can kind of listen to it. But this is the part that most people get confused about. And I urge you once you go through this, if it's still a little confusing, rewind the video and go through it again. And after you kind of wrap your head around this, it makes a lot of sense. But I will tell you the first time I did in along summing way back in the day and someone showed me this, it was a little confusing at first. So don't worry if you feel a little confused, I'll try to explain it as cleanly and as simply as possible, okay? So basically what we need to do is we need to take our mix out of the DAW, out of our interface, okay? My interface is a Universal Audio Apollo that has eight direct outputs on the back of the unit, but regardless of the interface, it doesn't really matter. You're gonna be limited to how many direct outputs you have on your interface, physical direct outputs. So in my example, I'm using a Universal Audio Apollo with eight direct outputs, so we're only gonna do eight channels of summing, even though the TSM uh, is a 32 channel summing mixer, but right now I'm only using eight channels just to keep this simple. But if you had two interfaces, let's say daisy chain together with eight direct outs on each one, you can use 16 channels of summing. If you had three of them, 24 channels, four, 32, you get the idea. So we're just going to do eight channels of summing. So we have to, um, first we have to make sure, uh, before we even get to the DAW, we have to make sure that we physically connect the quarter inch outputs on the back of my Universal Audio Apollo with TRS jacks, quarter inch TRS, to a D sub cable input on the TSM. And they make these specialty cables on, uh, you can go to any one of your favorite uh, music store uh, online or locally, they'll make what's called a D sub uh, connector cable, D sub on one side, 
TRS on the other. If you have an interface that has just D sub outs and D sub ins on the TSM, then you would get a, DS, uh, a D sub to a D sub cable connector. But I have a TRS out, so I'm gonna go TRS uh, outputs, quarter inch outputs to D sub inputs on the summing mixer. And you'll see some illustration, I'm sure on the screen at this point, showing you that kind of how that kind of works, okay? So you're gonna physically plug the eight channels of output to the D sub on the input. Once you've done that, now we have to route our audio to get out of our interface, and in my case, the Apollo. So this is how we're gonna do that. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to our IO screen, okay? So every DAW is gonna be a little bit different. In Studio One, I'm gonna come over to my Preferences window, right here, and I'm gonna go to my Audio Setup tab, and I'm gonna to go to my Song Setup. Now again, every DAW is gonna be a little bit different. But here is our inputs and our output tabs, okay? So let's start with the outputs. So as you can see, I have a Universal Audio Thunderbolt Apollo interface, and I have eight sets of direct outputs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight mono, or how's we're gonna use them, four stereo pairs, okay? That's what we have, okay? And now what we wanna do is we wanna set up four direct outputs, okay? And you can see them down here. It's gonna to default to my main outs, which is channel one, two. That's for my main speakers, my monitors. I also have a set on the Apollo. You actually have two sets of quarter inch outs, one for just the speakers and one for the direct outs, one through eight. Okay, and that's a little confusing, but don't worry about it. That's unique to the Apollo, but your interface, you're just gonna look for your direct outputs. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create four stereo pairs of outputs, one for each one of those physical quarter inch jacks. And I'm gonna call them stems. You can call them whatever you want, but that's a nomenclature that I use. So I'm gonna create one on line, on line output one and two, I'm gonna create what's called a drum stem. On line outs, physical outputs three and four, I'm gonna create a guitar stem. Uh, line outs five and six, I'm gonna call that a keyboard stem. And then line out seven and eight, I'm gonna do a vocal stem. Now you can, depending on your session, that's unique to this session and I'll show you in a minute, but depending on your particular session that you're working with, you could call these things whatever you want. You can have a drum stem, a guitar stem, a horn stem, or a percussion stem and a vocal stem, however you wanna do it. What I try to do is get all my drums and my bass kinda of going one set of outputs, all my guitars kinda of going out the second set of outputs, any keyboards and horns or things that are similar and sonic characteristics going out the third and then all my vocals go out the fourth set. Because I'm only using eight direct outputs, four stereo pairs, I have to kind of consolidate and group them together. Now, as I said a few minutes ago, if you have 16 direct outputs on, on your interface or if you daisy chain two interfaces together, you can break that, this out even further. So for example, I could have eight stereo pairs, 16 channels of summing, where I can have drums on one, say electric guitars on another, acoustic guitars on a separate one, keyboards and horns on a separate one, lead vocals and background vocals. That would give you, I think, eight stereo pairs. So you can break it out however you want. You're only limited to the amount of direct outputs that you have on the back of your interface. So in this example, again, eight direct outputs, four stereo pairs, we're gonna name them as such, okay? So we have now our outputs. Okay, now we have to go to our inputs. Now that the audio, and well, I'll show you the routing in a second, with the audio going out of our stems, okay? It's gonna go into the summing mixer because we have the cable connected from the direct outputs, the input of the TSM, the tube summing mixer. Okay, the tube, the tube summing mixer is gonna do its thing. It's gonna summon, it's gonna throw that analog stuff on it that we all talk about that we'll listen to in a minute. And then it's gonna come back into Studio One or our DAW. And now we have to create a set of inputs to bring that summed audio back in, okay? So think of this as like your tape machine in the analog console world that we talked about in the intro. So what I did is I created a set of inputs and I recalled it return seven and eight because I chose the physical inputs on my Apollo, I just chose channel seven and eight. I could have very easily chose five or six, three, four, one, two, doesn't matter. I just chose seven and eight. So I created an input, a stereo input, called it return seven, eight, and that is the inputs that the mix from the summing mixer is gonna come back into the DAW and then we're gonna record that into Studio One, which I'll show you in a minute. So once you've created your inputs and your outputs, okay, we're gonna click okay. Now let me show you in my mixer view where that is. And I color coded them, so let's start with the input. So if I scroll all the way over here, you'll see this input here. I'm gonna highlight it here. I'll open up the mixer so you can kind of see it. Let me expand my mixer here. And here it is over here in orange on the far left-hand side. Here's the return seven and eight. 
<clears throat> and excuse me, when we play back the audio in the second, you're going to see signal coming in here. This is the input or the tape machine, okay? And the outputs are all the way down here on the right-hand side. Here are the four outputs that I physically created. <clears throat> Pardon me. The four outputs that I physically created in the I.O. screen. Drum stem, guitar stem, keyboard stem, vocal stem, okay? So these are the outputs. This is the input, okay? All the tracks in the mix are in between the inputs and the outputs. So here's my session. Here's my drums all here in brown. Here's my bass in blue. Electric guitars, acoustic guitars. I think there's some keyboards here. Yes, there are. There's some keyboards in purple. There's a lead vocal and a bunch of background vocals here. Okay, a whole bunch, like 16 different background vocal tracks all kind of layered. Okay, so now what I do is as far as once I have my inputs and my outputs, now I want to route my tracks. Now, when we route our tracks, you can do this one of two ways. I'm going to show you the way I do it, which I feel is a more simplified way. So what I do is I group all of my instruments, all my drums, for example, I route them down to a drum bus in my DAW. So all my buses are here in black or this gray color here. Okay. So I have all my drums going to a drum bus. I have my bass guitar going to a bass bus, my acoustic guitar going to an acoustic guitar bus, electric guitar bus, keyboard bus, lead vocals, and I have two sets of background vocals. Okay, and if you look, for example, at my drums, my drum bus here, and you go down and look at my drum tracks, all of my drum tracks are routed to my drum bus. My bass is routed to the bass bus over here in blue. My electric guitars are routed to the electric guitar bus, so on and so forth. So all the individual tracks, the grouping of instruments, drums, bass, guitars, keys, are all being routed to our busing system. Now from the busing system, this is where we're gonna use our outputs that we created. From the busing system, we're gonna route each bus out to one of our stems that we created over here in orange. So for example, our drum bus, you can see the output right here, drum stem. Our bass bus, because again, we're limited to four stereo outputs in this example, I'm gonna route my bass bus to my drum stem as well. My guitars, acoustic and electric, are all going out the guitar stem. Okay. Now I could have put the bass and the guitars together on the guitar stem. It really doesn't matter. Again, just for, you can route this however you want. This is typically how I do it. My keyboards are going to my keyboard stem and all of my vocals, the lead vocal and the two background vocal tracks you can see are going to the vocal stem. Okay. So those are going over and they're being routed to these stems that we created or think of it as again, the physical outputs on the back of the interface. Okay, down here in purple, I have all my parallel compression tracks, which are just like my busing system. And again, they're being routed to the outputs the same way. My parallel bass, my parallel drums are going to my drum stem. My parallel guitars, acoustic and electric are going to the guitar stem, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so now once you have your busing system and you have all your individual tracks routed to your buses and your buses are routed to your physical outputs over here, now all that audio is going right out to our tube summing mixer. So if I play back this audio here, you're going to see audio signal on my outputs. Okay. You're going to see, you're going to see the meters. And then you're also going to see the meter back here on the return seven and eight. Okay. So let me play that back so you can see that. Never went to school cause my mama was cold. She worked me in the fields until the moon was whole. Drunk top, bashed up, she gave me no rest. Okay, see that's going out and it's coming back in. And I'm sure somewhere in editing, I'll put up the tube summing mixer. So when I play that audio back, you'll see the needles actually moving on the front of the tube summing mixer. So the audio is going from our buses, out of the interface, into the summing mixer, out of the summing mixer, back in onto return seven and eight. Okay, so then what you're monitoring, what you're hearing, what I'm hearing in my headphones is you're hearing this return seven, eight post summing or after summing makes sense so now you got to think of your return seven eight you have to think of that as your master bus okay your master bus is typically all the way down here on the right hand side but we're not using that we're not putting our effects on that track the way we would a typical master bus because we want to put it on after it's been summed so just follow along and you'll kind of get it don't worry if that sounds a little confusing it is at first to many people especially if you're new to this don't worry just trust me your seven and eight return is now your master bus as far as effects go so what does that mean so what that means is 
the audio s flows down through channel seven and eight through the inserts, just like it does on any other track, right? If you have a kick drum, for example, in your, in your edit screen, how does the signal flow? It goes through the top of the inserts and goes down the channel strip. So any effects you have on this compression, EQ, samples, whatever, it comes through this in that order, top down, right? Same thing with the return channel. So if the tube summing mixer is the first effect, you could kind of look at it that way, then what would I put on after that? Then after that, I might put on some, you know, some other effects. In this case, I have a little bit of compression and a little bit of EQ on my master bus, okay? So think of it that way. So any effects that you wanna put on the master bus when you're doing analog summing, you wanna put it on the return channel, okay? So I hope that makes sense. Rewind the video if it's a little confusing. Now, once you have all this set up and we see the audio coming back in to return seven and eight, you say, well, how do I export that as an MP3 or a WAV file? Now I wanna print that mix, okay? And this is another part that confuses a lot of new, new newbies and that's okay. So now once we've done that, the last thing we need to do now is we need to now record in our DAW, we need to print the mix that comes in on return seven and eight. Okay, so the way to do that, so the first thing we wanna do is we have to have a track that we're gonna record the mix onto. So we're just gonna add a track. So in any DAW, it's done the same, pretty much the same way. I'm gonna go to track, I'm gonna add tracks, and I'm gonna call this a print track. You can call it whatever you want. I call it a print track because we're printing the mix coming through the summing mixer on seven and eight into our DAW. So I call it a print track. It's an audio track, it's gonna be stereo, and my input is gonna be seven and eight, okay? It's gonna be my master fader or my pseudo master fader, okay? It's gonna be on seven and eight. And then the output of that is gonna to go to the normal output that we normally think of in our DAW on the far right hand side. So let me just hit okay. Okay, so here's our print track now. So now, what I wanna do is I wanna record enable this track, okay? I'm gonna hit record enable on here. Okay, and I wanna record this mix into the DAW. So let me just do a, a little 10 second thing here so you can see it. So I'm gonna record enable, and then I'm gonna hit record. Never went to school cause my mama was cold. She worked me in the fields until the moon was whole. Drunk up, bashed up, she gave me no rest. But now you child, I'll call her you rest. Yeah. I can't stand the taste. And everything's the same. Okay, so now this recorded audio is the, is the, uh, is the mix with the summing mixer printed on it. The, 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 the analog summing effect and the, and the color and all the stuff we talked about earlier is now printed onto this mix. So this is the track, the print track, is the track that you wanna export out as an MP3. And you may say to yourself, well, I wanna be able to hear the difference between something that is before summing, the regular tracks and after summing, how do I do that? Well, come back one second here, I'm gonna switch screens, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna A, B it so you can listen to the before and the after and then finally we'll exp ex export this print track, okay? So come on right back. Okay, so now we're back here in a different in a, in a different uh, screen here. And so what I did was, just to save some time in this video so it's not too long, is I've already gone ahead and I've now recorded the entire song on this print track, not just a snippet, the entire song, okay? And the way I've set things up now is on this print track, you can see down here in red, um, if I mute it, all the other tracks, the original tracks, the mix prior to it, will play. And then when I solo up the print track, you're just gonna hear what the TSM is doing to the audio, so you, we can do a quick AB, okay? So now let's just take a look at the routing quickly, just so you're not confused, if I haven't confused you already. So in the last video, or the last section on the, on the, on the other screen, remember all of my buses were sent out to my stems, but now I routed them to the main outs. Instead of the stems, what that means is, and the same thing with my parallel tracks. What that means is, is when I play back this audio, okay, you're gonna see the audio come out the main output, not the return seven and eight. Why? Because I changed the way I routed my buses from the stems to the main out. And the reason why I'm doing that for this example is because I want you to be able to hear the difference between what the mix sounded like before it was summed by the tube summing mixer. And then if we listen to the print track, that is after the summing mixer because I recorded it into the DAW. Does that make sense? Okay, now you won't have to do this in your studio. I'm just doing this for so we can do an AB. It's the only way to do it without having to physically disconnect all the hardware, okay? So if we listen to this, 
watch the, the main output uh, over here on the right hand side. That's where you're going to see the audio. Okay, this is not, this is the mix prior to summing because the print track is muted. Okay, so you see the audio coming out of the main out. Never went to the summing mixer, okay? Now, if I solo up the print track, which will now mute all of the individual tracks, what we're gonna be listening to is after summing. Okay, we recorded it back into the DAW. And if on the fly, I just mute the print track, we're gonna be able to solo between non-summed, solo up the print track, summed. Make sense? So let's try that. So let's start with the print track muted, which again is non-summed before the summing mixer. Okay, and then I'm, and then somewhere in the middle, I'm just gonna toggle back and forth by soloing up the print track, then muting it and soloing it and muting it. And that is gonna give us an A-B comparison. Now, here's the last thing I'm gonna say about this. Keep in mind, we're looking at this and watching this on YouTube and Facebook. And YouTube and Facebook and all these uh, you know online services, they're gonna compress the audio as well. So. You got to be listening to this on a good set of studio monitors or a good set of studio cans in order to hear the differences. And I'll tell you right up front that the differences are subtle. What you're going to listen for, I'm going to tell you what to listen for because I don't know how it's going to come across on YouTube. You just have to trust me and I'll tell you what I'm hearing. You're going to hear that with the non-summed before the summing mixer, the regular mix, sounds a little thin on the low end, and it sounds like it has a little bit more of a mid-range honk to it, and it doesn't have the smoothness on the top end. When I toggle over to the print track, which is the summed audio, the bottom end gets a little bit tighter, a little bit more thumpy, and that top, that upper mid-range, it gets a little nasally, kind of smooths out a little bit, and it sounds a little bit more warm, and that's the effect of the tubes of the tube summing mixer. Okay, this particular unit has tubes in it and that's gonna give it that sound characteristic. Every summing box is a little bit different and depending on the way it was built in the circuitry, it's gonna sound a little bit different. Now it's a subtle type of a thing. It's not this night and day type of a thing like maybe a bus compressor or, or, or a hard, uh, pan, or hard used EQ where you really boost and cut stuff. It's more subtle, okay? And that's why I'm not sure how well it's gonna come across on the video, okay? Now the other trick to this thing too is, when you're using a summing mixer of any kind, you want to mix what you're going to mix into the summing mixer, okay? It's not something you drop on at the end of the mix because what's going to happen is as you're mixing and making all your EQ and compression and panning decisions during the course of your mix by running the signal through the summing mixer as you're doing that, okay, you're going to you're gonna hear, it's going to have a lot more openness, it's going to have a lot more clarity to it, like we talked about in the beginning of the video, what this summing actually does to your audio, and it's going to give you more headroom, which therefore you're going to hear a little bit more accurately in your studio, on your monitors, or in your headphones, if you mix with headphones, what's kind of going on in the mix, and you're going to adjust, and you're going to be able to tweak your EQ and compression, and you're going to mix through it. That's another benefit. It lets you hear a little more accurately what's going on in the mix so you make better mixing decisions or a better EQ and compression and panning decisions. That's the point of it. So again, it's adding that like that last 10% onto the mix. It's not a magic bullet that will take a crappy mix and all of a sudden make a mix sound wonderful. That's not what summing does. Okay, so just to keep that in mind. So here we go now. We're going to start with the non-summed and then I'm going to solo up the print track and that's going to be the summed and you'll listen to what I just told you. So here we go.
Okay, so where you really hear a difference too is on that lead vocal. Without the summing, prior to summing, the lead vocal has kind of a little bit of a nasally sound to it. It's a little bit ear piercing. Um, it, it kind of bothers the ear a little bit. As soon as you put the print track on, what the summer is doing to it, what the TSM is doing to that lead vocal in particular, and this again has a lot to do with the transformers and certainly the tubes, it's kind of rounding off in, in, in that top end, that, that kind, of, uh, uh, kind of harsh frequencies. It's kind of smoothing it out a little bit. It's a little bit more pleasing to the ear and for the entire mix again it's giving it a little bit more low end punch and it's kind of, it's kind of getting rid of that mid-range mask a little bit okay so that is the difference between summing and non-summing and again rewind the video if you need to if some of this was a little confusing again once you work with this a little bit it becomes more and more clear and it's and once you get your 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 mind wrapped around it it makes perfect sense but it is a little confusing at first so the summing mixer in conclusion again it's it's a way to add the console kind of a vibe and sound characteristics to a mix. And when you mix through it, again, it's running it through that hardware, the transformers, the tubes, it adds a nice sound uh, characteristic, a pleasing sound character characteristic to your audio without getting piercing and without uh, getting a little uh, nasally sounding, as well as it opens things up a little bit and helps you make better mixing decisions. And that's really what an analog summer does. So I hope you found this video helpful and uh, that this was uh, somewhat enlightening if you've never worked with analog summing. Again, uh, check out Tegular Audio Manufacturer's website. I'll link it in the description. You can register and you can sign up. Uh, I think it's for two weeks where you can go ahead and they'll send you one and you can try it out in your own studio before you make the commitment. It's something you really need to listen in person. A video over YouTube doesn't always do it justice. Um, you really have to have it in your studio and hear it for yourself. I will tell you many years ago, before I started with analog summing, I was someone that wasn't a believer. I wasn't a believer in it. I thought it was all hype. And until I actually heard it in a friend's studio, and then I knew what the difference was. And ever since then, I've been working with it. Um, and I used to work with a Dangerous Music D-Box, which was great, but I wanted something with more channels. And the Tegular, Tegular Audio, the TSM is wonderful because I love the sound of the tubes. That's something that a lot of summing mixers don't have, especially at this price point. So this is a wonderful unit. Again, uh, I'm keeping this one in my studio. I like it a lot. And I'm going to expand my uh, rig from eight to, uh, to actually 16 channels of summing. And who knows, down the road, maybe 24 or 32. So once again, thanks for watching this video. I hope this was helpful. Make sure you hit that subscribe button low. Make sure you also go out to homerecordingmadeeasy.com and get your five free mixing training courses uh, just for uh, visiting my website. And it's my gift to you worth $110 of value. And I will see you in the next video. Take care.